Vulnerable ships could sink, VPN filter is still kicking, and it's really a lot worse than we thought, and Facebook makes private posts public for four days. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for June 12th, 2018. It's your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. So if you want access to exclusives, including the brand new Discord server, check out the Patreon link in the show notes below. And special thanks to our newest patrons, Eric, Bella, Bert, and Christopher. And now, on to the news. I first started getting interested in ship security when I learned that you can easily track the data of a ship through software-defined radio, from destination information to nautical speed to their originating location to their current whereabouts. It's kind of creepy. Also, it's all in plain text. Well, security researchers gave a talk during Info Security Europe, which is a convention that happens in London from June 5th through June 7th, explaining some of the scenarios in which ships could be hacked, tracked, stolen, and even sunk. Ken Munro published a summary on the website Pentest Partners explaining these scenarios. Munro explained that while GPS position data could be tracked, their proof of concept could also link SATCOM terminal version details to that GPS data, and terminal data is oftentimes set to a default on the ships. One example shows the username set to bridge and the password was set to 12345. I am not kidding. If an attacker was able to steal the satellite terminal credentials from a ship and connect it to the GPS coordinates, they could harm not only the ship but the people on board. Another proof of concept shows that the electronic chart display and information system, which is called ECDIS for short, are also vulnerable to hacks. This chart is used for navigation and is commonly on out data protocols or operating systems. So if targeted, it could allow an attacker to steer a ship off of track into land masses or other ships at sea. The ECDIS is ripe with flaws, from allowing the penetration testers to spoof the GPS coordinates so that the ship thought that it was on the right route but then it actually corrected to the wrong course, to allowing the researchers to make the ship think that it was a kilometer wide, which also totally screws up everything. The system that controls the engine, the ballast pumps, and steering gears could also be hacked easily since messages that send controls are sent in plain text with no encryption and no authentication. So what would be the implications of these kind of hacks? An attacker could sink important medical supplies going to an island that had a natural disaster. They could disrupt food supplies, or they could steer a ship into an area that is prone to piracy, which is still a thing. Yes, I know, piracy. Activists could even use this data to track and possibly disrupt illegal shipping of animals, human trafficking, and weapons, which personally I think would be kind of a good thing. Well, Monroe explained that mitigation is simple. Changing passwords on the internet facing terminals would be a good start, but the industry as a whole would need to start taking security very seriously to fix all of those possible vulnerabilities. Monroe did limit some details of the problems to give the shipping industry vendors time to fix them. A big thanks to Joel on Patreon for this story. Remember the other week when we were chatting about VPN filter? Well, it seems to be impacting a much larger amount than previously thought. Originally, US government agencies like the FBI put out a memo asking people to reboot their routers to stop the malware from spreading, since it had already infected more than 500,000 devices at that point over various countries. Well, unfortunately though, rebooting isn't quite enough since not only is part of the malware persistent, but new information surfaced last week explaining that the malware can also deliver exploits to endpoints and it can override reboots and it affects a much larger base of router models. So Cisco Talos posted a new blog post detailing the updates to the threat with a list of known devices updated to over 10 manufacturers, including Ubiquity, ZTE, TP-Link, QNAP, which we previously mentioned, Netgear, Linksys, Huawei, and Asus. This totals about 75 different devices in total across those manufacturers. Now, when it comes to being able to deliver new exploits, the VPN filter malware can inject malicious data into the web traffic while that data passes through the device, basically creating a man-in-the-middle attack. This part of the malware, which is dubbed Essler, S-S-L-E-R, 
even though it's pronounced Esler, by Talos is persistent through reboots. The man in the middle attack goes after data passing through port 80, which is commonly used for these kind of intrusions. This could allow the attacker to infect more than just the router by using it to pivot to other devices inside the network as well, so they could own the whole network. Another module called device destruction module can disable the device, rendering it bricked while also deleting any trace of VPN filter malware off of it. A third discovered module targets industrial control system traffic, specifically on the TP-Link R600 VPN. This one singles out TCP packets of a certain size to view but not modify. Talos did explain that major changes would be needed to allow for modifying traffic on these devices. Now, if you own an affected device, rather than simply rebooting like the FBI recommended, you could also do a factory reset of the router and then set it up with a unique password and username and make sure you use that unique password and username nowhere else. Keep your router updated to the newest firmware as well. A special thanks to Jeremy for sending in this story. We have seen this kind of uprising before and we will probably see it again in the future, I am sure. Every time a big company has a security scandal, they are highly scrutinized for weeks weeks and even months afterwards, with new stories detailing each and every hiccup that people see. And honestly, rightly so. This week I have got another Facebook update, of course. For four days during May, from May 18th through 22nd, Facebook was experiencing a bug that changed the default sharing settings for new posts, creating public ones instead of private ones as the default, and it affected 14 million users. Now Facebook was in the midst of testing a new feature which is called Featured Items, which will basically let you highlight certain photos or other content that you want more people to see on your profile. It was around this time when an employee discovered this bug, and the company went back and fixed the sharing settings for the affected posts, changing all of them to private, even if, by the user setting, they were supposed to be public, over the course of five days afterwards. So it took them five days to fix this. Of course, users could have noticed this as well and then changed the post back to private too if it was defaulted to public. This bug did not affect any previously made posts or the user's ability to choose an audience for a post. It just affected those default posts made during that four day time frame. But within those four days, posts could have been publicly shared about private matters. That could be relationships, health information, or even just like venting about your boss at work. Marketing agencies could have used that public post to develop stronger profile data on people too. Now while it's easy enough for an untrustworthy individual to screen capture a private post, a public post is viewable to anyone, whether you want it to be or not. So if you are worried that you were affected, you will receive a notification this week with a message that says, please review your posts, linking to any posts during that time frame that could have been affected. You can also go into your settings on Facebook and see what your previous posts are defaulted to, and you can change those settings as well. Or you could also delete your Facebook account from the settings menu as well, you know, in case you haven't done that yet. Just saying. Patrons, make sure to share your favorite stories on the community tab or on Discord. Every Friday, I will pick three or more top stories for a voting poll that patrons can vote on to be included in next week's episode. Patrons also get access to a downloadable audio version of the show, first looks at show topics, polls, discussions just for patrons, behind the scene photos, and now that new Discord server. And that Discord server is available just for patrons at $2 per month and up. Join now to get access to all of these and you're helping to support the show as well. Our next milestone goal gets you access to a live video Q&A just for patrons at all levels, and it gets us closer to doing a second episode each and every week. And honestly, there is a lot of security news going down right now. I would love to do a second episode every single week for you. And a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in these adorable brand new fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. Hit the subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page as well. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.